Champions. I'm Amy Morgan, the feature writer for the Marriage Initiative, and I am just absolutely delighted today to introduce Dr. John Trent to you. If you've ever known if your personality aligns with a beaver, an otter, a lion, or a golden retriever, you've probably read his book, The Blessing. Uh, he co-wrote it with uh, Gary Smalley more than three decades ago. Since then, the counselor, educator, family pastor, coach, husband, and father has created the ministry Strong Families to speak and train others to create cultures of blessing in their homes, workplaces, and ministries. John earned his PhD in marriage and family counseling from the North Central Texas Federation of Colleges and Universities, a THM in New Testament Greek from Dallas Theological Seminary, and a bachelor's degree in psychology and religion from Texas Christian University. He's written more than 30 books, including the marriage book, The Two Sides of Love, and shared the blessing with two million men through the Promise Keepers organization. He now works with his daughter, Carrie Trent Stageberg, on a mission to help end loneliness and build strong families. Together, they train marriage champions to become coaches through the International Christian Coaching Institute. John, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. Gosh, what a nice introduction. And uh uh, just an honor to get to be with you. And, and of course, uh, you know, we both went to TCU. I want to make sure that people know that. Uh, Home of the Mighty Frogs this year. <laughs> this year, we're not too mighty. So let's skip, uh, skip that and jump right into the interview. <laughs> oh, well, I know that is something that we both share that was fun to talk about. Tell us about the concept of the blessing. I know it, yeah. it applies to children, but it also applies in marriage. But we got to understand what it even is for yeah. our marriage champions to, to know how they can use it with their spouses and with people that they coach. Yeah. Well, you know, if you think about it, um, all of us have this incredibly deep need uh, for somebody to welcome us in. Uh, have you ever been to a party, uh, Amy? You know what that's like. You know, you're at a maybe a work party uh, with your husband, and so you don't know a lot of people, and and you're walking around, and you just, you know, there's that awkward kind of nobody's really welcoming you, you know, and then all of a sudden there's one person. And their eyes just light up, you know, and it's like, oh, my gosh, look who Amy's here. Look at that. And and um, it's really interesting. But C.S. Lewis, in a wonderful little book called The Weight of Glory, um, talks about how the weight of glory is God loving and blessing us. And it's like he welcomes us in. He says the door on which we've been knocking all our lives is finally open. And that's a picture of the blessing, I think, is when when we get God's blessing, I mean, that's, we realize, oh my gosh, he loves me. He died for me. He, he opens the door, welcomes us, knows our name. We get a new name with him. But now apply that uh, because there was a blessing that God gives, but in scripture, uh, there was also a blessing that parents gave, you know, like to children you know, with, J with Jacob and Esau. But hang on a minute. There were also blessings that were given to a spouse. And, and so, um, you know, the, so the same kind of principles. Uh, so the blessing is a way to communicate unconditional love that really uh, welcomes someone and, uh, and, and invites them in and says, I see you. And that's so important, uh, particularly in this day and age with so much loneliness and brokenness. Yes. And you had mentioned it, that this kind of came out of some of your work, you know, way back when, when you were doing your, your doctorate and your, uh, where you realized how many people have missed that sense of blessing from their parents, you know, from God, from their parents. And so you created kind of a five element way yeah. of, of how people can realize that. And, and let's talk about that. Let's end yeah. up. Well, I mean, if you think about it, uh, remember there were these two twins. I love that story of Jacob and Esau because I'm a twin and my mom always liked Jeff best, uh, basically. Uh, but, but actually she was pretty even, but the point is, uh, that, you know, Jacob gets the blessing and the word blessed means to add. It's like adding uh, a coin to a scale. It literally means in Hebrew to bow the knee. So it's the attitude, man, you're so valuable. So we, you know, you bow, 
uh, you don't have to actually bow to your kids or your spouse. You can try that, but it probably won't work. But the point is that more that with our attitude and our actions, like adding a coin to a scale. So there's kind of five things that you always added. So, and what's interesting is now, uh, my day job is I train counselors and uh, coaches and stuff. But um, in terms of attachment theory, uh, it's amazing that the five elements of the blessing answer every question when it comes to attachment. So if you're an attachment theorist today working with couples, here's the questions that you're going to you're going to ask is number one, do you see me? Yeah. OK, you know, n- number number two if I reach out, you know, emotionally, whatever, will you reach back? Okay. Number three is, is that you're, you're saying to them, am I enough? Is, you know, are they, you know, do you feel that way? Are are you enough? And the last one is, are you going to stay with me? Okay. Now that's clinical research. Okay. Well now listen to the five elements of the blessing because they answer all four of them. Okay. So those are the four attachment you know, from, from clinical attachment theory, but, uh, biblically, uh, God got there way before clinical studies on attachment is what I'm getting at. And so when you bless someone, number one was appropriate, meaningful touch, but it was, it was, it was that hug, please come close and kiss me, my son. And Genesis chapter 27, um, you see touch and song of Solomon. And there were so many places in scripture where again, uh, husbands and wife, there's that appropriate touch, but then also it was our eyes. Um, and interestingly, uh, you know, we have a neurobiology friend who says love moves at the speed of joy. And you, there's this deep sense, man, when you look at somebody like you're crazy about them, you know, uh, you haven't seen your spouse in a couple of days, he goes on a trip, comes back home and your eyes just light up. Or do you just go, well, you know, about time. Uh, so there's that, first of all, you know, that reach out appropriate touch, you know, hug, a handshake, um, uh, you know, for, for a couple, that's huge, but also how we look at them. So that touch, number two, is you say it, okay? You you know, you can write it, that's fine, but you want to verbalize it. The blessing was always verbalized. Well, what do you say? Well, you say words, number three, that attach high value. So that's where I came up with the lion and otter and golden retriever and beaver. It's a book we did called The Two Sides of Love because people would say, well, I want to bless them, but how do I attach high value? How do I help understand what are their strengths that God has put in their life? Uh, So who's that person God's placed with you and what are their strengths? So with our touch in our eyes, with our words that attach high value, that begins to communicate number four, which is special future. Mm -hmm. What that means is, and that's so important. Remember those attachment questions, you know, is, are you going to stay with me? You know, and it is when we communicate that deep sense of, man, uh, I'm, I'm with you. We're, we're going the distance. And that leads to the fifth one, uh, which is called genuine commitment. And um, can I give you a quick example? Absolutely. Okay. So University of Virginia, UVA. Now, uh, interestingly, you know, Liberty University is kind of the same. Uh, there's several schools where there's these, you know, pretty, they, they look like mountains, but they're really high hills right by campus. Okay. So there's this guy named Prophet, and um, he was a, a cognitive researcher. And so what he would do is he would look for people all by themselves, walking on campus, students, and they say, hey, want to be in a study? Uh, you get out of a class for free. Here's a pass. Who doesn't want to be in a clinical study? Miss class. <laughs> so they would put a big backpack on them. They'd have them wired up because they were looking at it. It was a visual perception study. Here's this high hill. You've got a 50 pound pack. That's stout. Okay. Yeah. You got a 50 pound pack on your back. You're looking up the hill. You're by yourself. And every one of the people they measured they would say the hill was higher and it was harder to climb. Well, now they looked at people that were walking across that were together. Now it could be two roommates. uh, 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 Hey, you guys dating? Yeah. Oh, well, 
you really like each other? Yeah. So they want to make sure they're connected first. Okay. Yeah. Or, and it says, all right. So they'd put one person, they'd wire them all up, have them put on the backpack. Now they'd have the person with them stand next to them, put on a backpack because they're going up the hill with them. And in every case, now they didn't actually go up the hill. It's a perception study. How high was it? In every case, guess what? When somebody's going up with you, the hill shrunk. Yeah. And the amount of effort is, and they're called, we call them high hill people, genuine commitment. That's when you're saying, I, I just did a Sunday school class with about 100 people on Sunday. And I literally had these couples turn and put their hand on each other's shoulder and say, all right, Right now, we're facing a hill because they are. Everybody is. You guys are. I mean, as great as things are going, you know, there's always challenges, right? And um, so some of us are listening to this and we're facing some big hills. And so you doing it all alone or hopefully in a marriage, you've got somebody that's putting their hand on your shoulder um, and, and saying, I'm going up the hill with you. And so once people understand what attachment is, see, I grew up in a single parent home. I didn't, I never saw it lived out. Um, but Deuteronomy 23, five says this says the Lord, your God was not willing to listen to Balaam. That was this guy that was going to curse God's people. And the word curse means to subtract. So blesses to add Remember, like a coin curses subtract. So as the Lord, your God was not willing uh, for, for this guy that was speaking really, you know, is with his words was going to take away from you, but the Lord, your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord, your God loves you. Mm -hmm. So that's three times, Lord, your God, Lord, your, your God is the one that even if you're like me or my wife, I came from a big time alcoholic home. My wife came from a big time alcoholic home. But Almighty God, once you get into God's word, you realize, oh, my gosh, I can reverse in Christ. I can reverse the curse and understand what the blessing and what attachment is and move towards someone. Well, and I love that you mentioned that because some of your work, you have a, you have several courses on your website, set a lot of free resources. Uh, there's a challenge where people can find out if they're that otter <laughs> or <laughs> lion or other thing that they might be. Um, but also they, you have, you have resources there if they weren't blessed, if yeah. they weren't, if they missed out, you yeah. have, not only do you have books, but you have ways and courses that people can start finding the blessing that God has for them and then learning how to extend it to their spouse. So let's talk about that. Your book, Two Sides of Love, really yeah. talks about how to extend that blessing to the spouse. Well, it, it does. I mean, and uh, a long time ago, I came up with a way of doing personalities where I did lion, otter, duck, and, and beaver. And so that's what I would start, teach. And then I teamed up with this guy named Gary Smalley, who was my <laughs> best friend at the time. And, and Gary, we started working together. He goes, John, we got to lose the duck. And so he, <laughs> it was lion, otter, golden retriever and beaver. And, and so it's a personality construct of helping people see kind of what are their strengths. But Amy, here's part of the reason why, you know, the two sides of love, when you look at the, at Jesus, okay, he was the lion of Judah and the lamb of God. He had a hard side and a soft side. Now, think who a lot of times gets married is, is you know, you don't have opposites really do tend to attract clinically, you know. So you've got a lion, you know, take charge, charge up the hill, and they marry who? You know, this golden retriever that's sensitive and caring. And it's like two 20-year-olds married to make one 40-year-old, you know. <laughs> and, um, and the problem is they could begin, you know, he can be roaring at her and, and she can step away uh, just because, man, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I don't want to be roared at. And, and all of a sudden, when you begin to realize that when you look at Jesus, he could do the most loving thing when someone most needed it. And so that's what that book is all about. It's saying, well, first of all, what are your natural bents and gifts? Are they on the high, hard side like beavers? You know, beavers and lions are good at discipline. All right. Otters and golden retrievers are great at, you know, just, uh, you know, relationships and, and things like this. And so uh, but but guess what? It says in First uh, Corinthians 13 that God has placed us, each one of us right where we need to be. 
you know, uh, I'm sorry, 12, first, uh, first Corinthians 12, 18. And so it said that, that God has placed us right where we need to be. And, and so, uh, but we're not all eyes. We're not all ears. And that's what that book is about is just how do you, how do you understand who you are, who they are? Why is that so important? Oh my gosh, my wife and I, Cindy, we're so different. One of the only, you know, one of the only things we had in common is we're both married on the same day. Okay. Um, I'm a night person. She's a morning person. Uh, you know, thank the Lord. She's more of a saver. I'm more of a spender. She wants the toilet paper to go off the top of the roll. I just want it there. I don't really care uh, otherwise. But what I'm getting at is, is that, man, when we first got married, I mean, she used to think I would stay up at night to strain her out. It just came naturally, you know, because of we were so different. Um, but I thank the Lord that, uh, man, our, our, you know, our first month of marriage, for example, I bounced five checks first Ooh. month of marriage. <laughs> now that's not a good thing. Cindy had never. So I'm a otter. If you haven't already figured it out, she's <laughs> otter, a beaver. Otter. Yeah. yeah. She's a beaver, uh, beaver retriever. So she's real organized. The beaver, uh, real sensitive, the golden retriever. And uh, she had never bounced a che check ever in her life. You know, six months go by. I'm ready to switch banks. Okay. And finally figure out my balance. <laughs> Draw the line. Uh, Again. <laughs> yeah, she's ready to switch relationships. She's so frustrated. Um, but but what I began to realize is, you know what, again, maybe God, what if God placed somebody in your life to complete you and not to defeat you? And when I finally began to realize that, now guess who's after the first six months, guess who uh, I, I've never seen a check since then, you know, we'd be live, we'd be living down by the river in a trailer right now. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you're living in a trailer by the river, but that's where we would be certainly. Uh, but I thank God for, uh, Cindy, but it took that choice. You know, it, it's a choice, isn't it, Amy? I mean, you've got to really choose Deuteronomy 30, uh, 19, the Lord, your God, uh, it, it says, you know, I call heaven and earth the witness that I've set before you a choice, life or death. So choose life in Christ, life over death, but then it's blessing over curse. Yeah. So, you know, blessing to add, curse to subtract. So these are choices that we're talking about that people can make. And uh, I never saw somebody, my mom was wonderful, but, you know, uh, she'd been divorced twice. I never met my dad until I was in college, right at the end of college. Uh, so I never saw a relationship, you know, it was all lived out with God's love. Uh, but, but man, he can reverse the curse. And, and that's the great news. Well, and talking about choices, that's one of the things that you unpack for our marriage champions. One of the tools is that two degree difference. Yeah. Those little choices. Let's talk about that. Cause I think that could be really valuable for our marriage champions to, to understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, how many times have you worked with people you do, uh, you know, what, what you get to do is help couples. And for a lot of couples, particularly if they're facing a big problem, they're thinking what big problem. I need a big salute. We're going on a Christian cruise, you know, that'll solve everything, everything. Well, now you're mad at them and now you're in a tiny room for a week, you know, so it doesn't really, uh, anyway, go ahead and go on a cruise, but it's probably not going to help. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, but again, you know, think about, you know, Jesus talks about that. He who is faithful in a, in a little, little, that's the one that's rewarded much. Uh, C.S. Lewis makes the statement in mere Christianity that it is the small things, the small things that will turn us either into a heavenly or hellish creature. So one of the things we do is, is called, we call it the two degree difference. And it's just make a, uh, like, like Amy or be honest, you know, this is a Christian, uh, uh <laughs> record recording, you know, you can be, uh, but are you a better than average driver? Would you say, and it's okay to say yes is what I'm getting at. You know, would you say you're better than average? I have very few accidents or tickets. How okay. About and you know, <laughs> eight, eighty-one percent of Americans think they're better than average, which is not true. I mean, come to Arizona <laughs> when I live and they're they're that's just not true. But anyway, anyway, you know why you're making now uh, uh picture you got a steering wheel. 
Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go to the store after this, after this interview, you know, and you're driving to the store and you're making 10 degree, you know, uh, the steering wheel, 10 degree changes the whole way there. What's going to happen? Number one, if there's any kids in the car, they're going to get sick. Right. <laughs> okay. And then if there's a DUI task force, they're going to nail you because that's what they're <laughs> looking for. What keeps you between the lines, the word righteousness in the new Testament means to stay between the lines. And think about that. How do you stay between the lines? You're making lots of small changes. So that's what we encourage couples to do is give them lots of tools that help them uh, just make, you know, a small, just, just do uh, small things. And uh, we call them caring days uh, things. What are, what's, what's one small, specific, positive thing. So let me just ask you, I'll put you on the spot. You always love that. I'm sure. So your husband's Tom, is that right? Steve. Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. All right. All right. So what's one thing um, that Steve could do for you? One, not that, you know, that, that you would say to you, okay, uh, th that really makes me feel great. You know, what's one small, not fly me to San Diego for breakfast or something <laughs> huge, but what's one small thing he could do? Well, I will tell you one small thing that he does do and yeah, he's yeah. done for probably 25 of our 28 years of marriage. He makes coffee first and he oh. brings a cup to my side, my nightstand. It's all the way I like it. And he leaves it there because he gets up earlier than I do and yeah. he leaves it there for me. And I wow. love it. I wake up and there's my coffee. Okay. And so, you know, and uh, so guess what? In clinical studies, um, People that are so strained out, clinical couples or people that have either uh, filed for divorce or they're right at the right at the edge. And guess how many small, specific, positive, caring things they do for each other? Zero, zero in the average week. Uh, and so, what we get them to do is to do one a day, just one thing a day. Oh my gosh, they must think I'm really valuable. They put a cup of coffee there. That's small, specific, you know. Um, and, and, you know, and another one is just how you look at him. I mean, when you see him just go, ah, you know, that bright eyes, you know, go, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just when you first see somebody, um, it says in Proverbs, bright eyes makes the heart glad. So that's small. That's something small. Does he see what I'm getting at? So what we're doing is pulling out things from people that they can do. And uh, actions dictate feelings, not the reverse. Uh, you, you know, it's like, well, I don't feel like doing it. Well, so what? You know, <laughs> what a lot of people do is they think, well, I'm going to wait until I feel like I've lost that loving feeling. So I'm going to wait till that feeling comes back. And again, part of commitment is that uh, that realization that, you know what, it is commitment that actually begins to build that trust and then that relational, emotional uh, sense of connection. And it really starts with small things. So that's the two degree difference. I love that. And I love that you brought up that caring days where you encourage them to do something small, each of them for each other. Yes. And yeah. yeah. And, and you switch, you even switch. So what we make them do is, is, you know, so she's saying, what could you do that was really valuable to me? Cause we guess, I mean, I used to, you know, our first anniversary, uh, uh, Cindy and I, I, uh, we were living in Dallas and there's a place called the Petroleum Club, which is oh. really expensive. And I thought, man, here's what we need to do is we need to uh, go to the Petroleum Club. I had a friend that was a member and uh, got me in and it cost, you know, a fortune and we're driving home and, and Cindy goes, gosh, first anniversary, no kids, you know. And uh, we're in a Maverick, which is they don't they don't exist anymore. They all blew up at the Pintos, uh, but but we're in this. It's a bench seat, so she's sitting right next to me, and we're driving home, and no kids, first anniversary. I'm thinking, man, romance, this will be great. And she goes, well, hey, uh, I just got to ask you. That was so wonderful, sweetheart. Oh, that's great. But she goes, I can I ask you one question? I go, yeah. She goes, where did we get the money? for the petroleum club. And, you know, I was a youth pastor making all that good money, you know? And, um, and, uh, I go, well, you don't really want to know. And she goes, no, come on, John. And it goes from sweetheart to John. And I, I go, well, I, I, you know, I don't, I hate to tell you, but we just ate our couch. 
So we'd been, we'd been saving for a couch. Oh. And I thought, who needs a couch, really? I mean, we can resave for that anytime. And uh, now there were no touchy the toes that night, I'll tell you oh. that. But the point is, is um, there's just that deep sense of which I thought for sure. Now, I never ask her. See what I'm getting at? So yeah. that's what we do with caring days things is what's on your list. Then you give them that list and then they're doing things that actually make a difference, not blowing up the whole evening. Not just what you think. No, I love that. Well, you also mentioned commitment. That's That's been something that you've talked about a lot. And you have a new book out with your daughter. Where do I go from here? Yeah. Talking about and, and part of that is commitment with the life mapping. Explain that, because I think our champions would be really interested. And this is brand new stuff. This just came oh, out. Yeah. We were just on Focus on the Family for a couple of days. People can find uh, those broadcasts. And uh, But it's called Where Do I Go From Here? And what we do is, is uh, remember in the book of Revelation, there was this church, the church of Ephesus, and it got off track. And he said, hey, you've done a lot of great things, but you've left your first love. Well, that's a lot of marriages. I mean, it's just wake up one day and it's not that you haven't done a lot of good thing or raised some great kids. And all of a sudden, man, it's like, how did we get here? And what are we doing here? You know, now other people, it's where do I go from here? They're in transition or they're lost a job or whatever, but staying with marriage. OK, um, but he tells them to do three things. Remember from where you've fallen repent, the Lord does, you know, and then do the deed you did at first. And so how do you get back that first love? So as we were building, you know, working on that, uh, it was like, oh my gosh. So we use a tool called storyboarding and we get them to look at their life story. Yeah. What are your strengths? Where have you, and, and what were the struggles, the strengths and the struggles in your past? So you're looking at that as a couple, but then you're saying, okay, well, are you an image manager or authentic liver? Meaning authentic uh, image management is, well, we're going to ignore all that. And we're just going to try to have an image. Good luck with that uh, as it breaks apart over time. Uh, but authentic living is, is, okay, Lord, what have I done to deal with some of that hurt and really recognize the good parts, right? And then the last thing is get a clear plan. And, and so we storyboard out, well, what could you do to move forward? And there's even a thing called learned hopefulness, which is when your plan blows up, because whose plan doesn't blow up? There's no perfect plan. Um, but it's a, it's a really fun tool to look at our life together and map out, you know, where we can go toward God's best, but it's called, where do I go from here? Yeah, well, I love that. And life mapping is actually one of the things that our marriage champions could become certified in. Yeah. You you have a program with the the, the ICCI, the, the yeah. International Christian Coaching Institute, where they can learn these things. Tell tell our marriage champions how they can access your material there. Yeah, what's really cool is you know uh, I've I've been on a lot of planes. I'm a three million miler with American, and then also you know, uh, several other airlines and stuff. So over the years, but you know, we, uh, Carrie and I, you know, as we've been thinking about it and praying about it, we thought, man, we need to just start training some coaches because I'm never going to get to Poughkeepsie, but there's somebody there right now that's listening to this, that, that could be a coach. And so, um, uh, ICCI international Christian coaching Institute is uh, ICCICoaching.com. Super easy. Go there and it'll talk about courses and models. And if they click on models, you go to this uh, strong family coach. And we have three things. We teach people to be blessing and attachment coaches because that's kind of where it begins. you know. But then strengths coaches, we teach them all about how to use the connect assessment and the animals to help people see their strengths. But then we teach them how to be life mapping coaches. And you don't have to be a life coach. Anybody can take the, the courses. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's a life coaching platform, but they let anybody, you know, take them. And so if you're kind of the marriage director at, or working with couples at, at your church or whatever, you know, a small group leader, uh, men's, men, women's ministry, anybody like that could take it. Um, you know, again, you don't have to be a counselor or a coach, but it's 10 sessions and Carrie and I train you and then you get a certificate that, man, you can go out there and uh, go impact some people's lives and really encourage them. 
I just love that. That makes it so easy. And I think there's so many of our marriage champions right now that would just love to have that. It's like that next step yeah, of information yeah. and resource. They can learn right from you and your daughter, Carrie, yeah. uh, who work together with strong families and they can learn right how they can have more curriculum, more resources to improve what they're doing. Yeah. That's been really fun getting to work with your daughter. How about that? You know, and she's, she's a rock star and will you know, long after I'm, uh, uh, hung it, hung up the shoes and just watching, uh, teaching TCU games, um, from here in heaven, whatever. But the point is, is that, uh, uh, she'll take strong families down the road and that's been really, really fun to get to hang out with her. That's for sure. And our other daughter, who's awesome too, but Carrie's been great too. Oh, that's just so wonderful. Oh, gosh, John, thank you so much. It is so fun talking to you. Two otters. Are, it's amazing we kept things <laughs> on track, but we did. Yeah, people are going to go, they talked about so much. Why didn't they just talk about one thing and go deeper? But we must have hit on 15 things. So way to, way to go. I like it. It was great. Lot, lots of food for thought for our marriage champions. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. All right. Thank you. Oh, and as always, you can find more about John Trent and Strong Families at marriageinitiative.org. <music>